so for step 11 charging the battery well the only reason they're asking you to do this at this point is because when we move to step 12 uh, we need to make sure that the servo is in neutral before we attach the servo saver pieces so uh, uh, this is already charged it's ready to go uh, pretty self-explanatory so we're just going to move right into step 12. so i will pull the pieces together and they're basically asking you for these two screws a uh, bb1 uh, and then this little guy bc3 uh, which is going to be used for the servo and i'm going to be using a futaba s3004 as the servo and i'm going to be using a tamiya tble 04 s uh, ESC for this. So those are the two main pieces that I'm using. Now you may find in your kit that it came with a Hobbywing 1060, uh, which is perfectly fine. The instructions are pretty much going to be the same going forward. The only issue will be the on off button, which there may be, um, you may have to do an adjustment because this is specifically designed to fit into that on off spot on the uh, Hornet and I don't think it can fit there without you either you know figuring out another way to to put this down or you just put the on off switch in in a completely different place but we'll address that when we get to that step so currently what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set all of this up get it ready and we'll check to see if the servo is in neutral before we attach the servo saver pieces so here's where the two steps come together. So the battery, it's charged and it's plugged in. We've got our radio, it's ready to go and I just need to flip it on. We see the red light, it's on. So the battery is obviously plugged into our ESC and the ESC is plugged into slot two, which is throttle and our servo is plugged into channel one which is the steering and that's pretty consistent across the board steering is channel one throttle is steering two so we have it right here ready to go for the test and this is a step that you do not want to miss um, it kind of inhibits the build in some ways because now you got to charge the battery you got to get everything all connected but it's a vitally important step um, simply because you don't want to uh, put on the servo saver and get everything ready if in fact it's not in neutral because later on it's going to cause you some grief and you'd, you'd have to take everything apart again so we know that the transmitter is ready to go all i need to do is throw this switch and you'll see that the servo itself has this geared ribbing which is what's attaching to the servo so it's its own servo gear essentially it's got its own mesh so when i turn this on you're going to see the servo do a bit of a shimmy and then go back to neutral. And that's what you want before the servo saver is attached. So I'm gonna flick the switch and you're gonna see it do a shimmy. Do you see that? So I'm gonna turn it on again and you'll see a little shimmy. So that is now in neutral. I'll do it one more time so you can see what I'm talking about. You're gonna see the gear do a bit of a shimmy. That is how you set this in neutral. Now you know that you can attach all of those servo saver pieces to the servo and know that it's in the correct spot. And of course, you're gonna find all those pieces on here. So as we see in this picture right here, all these pieces, P3, P4, P5, P1, they are all on here. And you can see the numbers right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so I'm going to cut out all of these pieces, get them ready, clean them up, and then we're going to install them on the servo. So I'm actually going to disconnect this stuff now because it doesn't need to be connected anymore. Because depending on the build, you're going to want them uh, unattached anyway. It's going to be easier for you to install this stuff into the chassis. So I'm going to unconnect that, cut the parts off that I need, and then we'll attach the servo saver to the servo.
So before I cut the pieces out that we need off this parts tree, I do need to show you this because depending on the radio that you have bought, it will affect which servo saver pieces you're going to need. So for example, this is obviously a Futaba radio system that I've picked. So I am gonna be using the P5 one, which is, you can see P5 is this one right here. But there's also P6 and P7. And you can see here, if you've got a Sanwa or an Acoms servo, you're gonna want this one. Um, but they also have another one on here, a uh, number seven. And I don't know exactly what it's for, but one of these should work for your radio. Well, it still says Sanwa. But the thing is, every servo is different. So the Futaba and Tamiya ones, that you can use the P5. The Sanwa or Acoms, you can use the P6. But you'll just note that depending on the radio system you have, you may have to use either this one, this one, or this one to set it up. So in my case, it's going to be the P5. So I'm going to cut off P5, P4, P3, P1, get those all cleaned up, and then let's install those onto the servo. So here I've cut out all of the pieces that I need in order to set up everything on this Futaba servo. Now, just as a reminder, at the beginning of this step, it showed that there were two types of screws. And you might think, oh, I need both. Well, they actually don't apply that way because you're gonna use the smaller screw if you're using the Futaba or Tamiya, and then there's the BB-1 for the Sanwa or Acoms, which is why this is the smaller one, which is the one that I'm going to end up being using because of the Futaba one. Now, the other thing to make note of is the positioning. So you'll see on the servo that the wire is coming out of this side so you're going to want to attach it the same way because you can see that the servos to the right and then the descriptions on the left, well, that's just like it is on the picture. So if we were gonna do it this way, we're gonna to want to put the P5 up because you can see the way that's positioned and you want to have that sitting perpendicular. See how that is going to be in the end. But first off, let's get this on. Now you can see that if I put it on, it's not level. If I move it one, one basically mesh of the gear, it's better. It's not perfect, but it's better because you can see that there's a noticeable difference. So what I try to do is make sure that it's as level as possible. Cause like if I go one over, you can see it's too far to the right. You go one there, that's pretty close to center. If I go the other way, it's too far to the left. So we're gonna click it back and that's where I want it to be. So then they want you to put on P4, which sort of is basically just pushes over top of that one, just like that. Then you've got this piece here, which you can see is going to face down. So that's gonna fit over top, just like that. Whoops, well, now I've popped the whole thing off, but that's okay, I'll just put that back on. And then there's that little, little piece right here, almost like a plastic washer. And then we've got our screw, which I will now attach. Now what I'm going to do is hold this so that it doesn't move when I'm screwing this in. So I'll screw it in as much as I can. And when I feel some resistance, I'm going to try and hold, still tighten it, but hold it so that it doesn't move, so that we know that we're still in neutral. There we go. It is correct. Now, you'll see here that it's showing definitely completely perpendicular. It wants to be vertical. Well, if I hold this, it's slightly to the right, but that's okay because when we do the fine tuning with the controls on the transmitter, we can make this the way it needs to be. But for now, that is correct. So we've done our radio check. We, we've got our servo all set and ready to go. So now we can move on to step 13, which is attaching the steering rods.